Hello there and welcome to Keys to College. Um, we're very excited to have you here and listening and hopefully asking any questions you have in the chat about the roadmap to college. And uh, Gina is uh, unable to be here today because of a family situation that she needs to take care of. Um, so I'm gonna spend some time talking with you about the roadmap to college. Um, and especially three tips that we have for parents of ninth through 11th graders. Um, so as you, you may know me, um, my name is Jennifer Schoen and I am uh, a higher education professional. I've had jobs at multiple different kinds of universities from the large public flagship school to very small private institutions, religious institutions, uh, and uh, non-religious institutions. And I've spent 35 years in education from working with admissions and scholarships, which is what I do now, to orientation, to student activities, and then all the way through to career development and helping students leave college and make a great transition to what they wanna do next. Uh, my partner in crime, or my partner in education, I should say, is uh, Gina Christ. And she also has uh, 35 years or so, she likes to say decades of experience uh, working in, high, in uh, higher ed and in K through 12. Um, she has been a school counselor uh, and so that her experience really helps to design what it is that we wanna talk with you today about creating this roadmap. Um, a roadmap is so important. So whether your student is in ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, there are so many things that they can do now that are not stressful, that should be fun, should be interesting, should be about them uh, as they're trying to figure out, do they wanna to go to college, where they wanna to go to college and what might they wanna study when they're at college? Although that really is the third question right now because having worked with students for many, many years now, a lot of them think they know, but once they get to college, it's like the blinders are off and they see all the things that are offered to them. Um, so I think that's the last, the last piece. So what I want to talk today and the three tips that we want to share with you is really very simple things, um, hard to do, easy to say, harder to do. One is reflection, uh, the second is evaluation, and then the third one is planning. Um, and we'll talk about some roadmap ideas uh, as we get toward the end there. So the reflection piece, I find the reflection piece to be incredibly important. I think everything starts from there because if you don't look back and kind of see where you were, it's much harder to plan where you wanna go. Now, I'm not saying live in the past or let the past predict your future, but if you reflect on, you know, sitting down with, with your student and saying, you know, you did really well at this, um, you know, why do you think that is? Or, oh, you, you kind of struggled in this. Is there anything you might do differently in this next term or in this next school year? I just think those are such vital questions to start asking and just to make part of your everyday conversation with your student. Um, because you, I, I'm surprised sometimes when I sit down with my students who've had a, you know, a rocky, a rocky semester, let's say, and they really are thinking about what they could do differently and better. And they have laid out to me some really wonderful strategies about what they could do to improve. And I know it would be the same thing for your student in high school. Um, and maybe they might not wanna talk through everything with you, but even if it's, if it's a peer, if it's someone at school, if it's a teacher, having them start to think about that reflection. And then we have four things that we thought would be great for you to start talking about. The first is academic performance, right? Because when you're going to college, that's the first thing that admissions is looking at. And the reason we're looking at that is because we want to know how well you're going to do academically if you come to that institution, can you thrive there? So it's academic performance for admissions, but it's so much more than that. It's academic performance to lay that foundation and get those skills learning how to study, how to think critically that they can then use in college when they get a lot more information a lot quicker. So reflecting on their academic performance and again, asking those questions, are there things you do differently? Are there things you wanna repeat that worked well for you? And why is that? Um, academic course load is another one. Um, Gina had this great uh, 
idea she shared uh, in, in, our, in the conversations that we've had. And she talked about how getting a hold of the high school courses, like that high school courses, not just for ninth and 10th grade, if your students are ninth grade or 10th and 11th or 11th and 12th, but what are the courses that are offered at the 12th grade level? Are there any advanced placement AP courses? Are there IB, international baccalaureate courses? Does your school offer dual credit where a student can take uh, courses at a community college or a local college and they get high school credit at the same time they're getting college credit? Now, if you know what the school offers and you and your student talk about that, then you know how to plan for what it is that you should take in ninth grade and 10th grade and 11th grade and in 12th grade in order to get to the level you want to get to. So that's what we're talking about when we talk about academic course load. And with that too, with the course load piece is how much can your student handle? Do they do well under pressure? Do they just like to do challenging classes and challenging classes or maybe fewer challenging classes as they go along would be a better way to prepare them and to help them see success. Um, and that goes with the effort and the time too, right? How much effort is your student putting in in the classes that they're taking? And how does that help you and them? And by you, I mean all of you together as a family. How does that help you maybe predict what they should be taking in the future? Same with time. Is all of their time going into coursework so they're not doing anything outside of school? Then that's probably not a very healthy balance for your student because they should be gaining other skills like interpersonal skills, communication skills, that they just might not have the opportunity to do in the classroom if it's a traditional high school. Um, so those are just a few things that we think, if you, if you spend time as a family reflecting on those things, that will really help give you a good sense of, you know, where your student is, what they're thinking about, but also planning for the future. And then that takes us sort of right into, into the, these three big things is when you're doing your reflection. Um, if you and your student would want to journal at all, like we recommend that, we think that's great uh, to kind of write down some of these thoughts that you have as you go through these questions and as you have these conversations. Um, but you know, the, the honest reflection piece is thinking about the passion, like what is a student really good at? And can they take more courses in that? Can they take uh, an, an, another, can they jump to another level in their involvement in that, in that activity? Um, let's, so, I mean, there's a picture of a guitar here, but so for me, I'll give you an example. Um, I was in band and I uh, switched to the French horn when I got to high school from the trumpet. And so I really loved music. And so my parents said, well, let's see if we can find someone local who can give you some French horn lessons so you can be better at it. Um, and so I took, I took French horn lessons and that really kind of opened up a lot of fun for me and actually uh, had me switch also into taking some singing lessons when I was in choir um, because I just loved music so much when I was in high school. So that was a passion of mine. And then I got to do different levels of activities. I got to try out for, for all state band. I got to try out for all state choir. I was way more successful with all state choir than I was with band, but that's another story. Um, so what's their passion and, and can they go farther in that than maybe they think they can right now and do they want to? So getting a sense of, of who they are and where they want to go and how they can use that. Because that just, you know, from my perspective, again, from my experience of seeing students, they all do better when they're not just focused on academics, when they have something else in their lives that they really are excited to do every week. It just, it improves their grades just flat out. So passion's very important. Um, interests are, are next. I think especially for ninth graders and 10th graders, you know, it's okay to join a club and say like, oh, that wasn't what I thought it would be. I'm gonna switch and go over here and try this club. I wanna try this to sort of experiment to see who they are and what their interests are because they're still developing their identity and who it is that they wanna be. And interests are a part of that. So as they're out there kind of diving into those interests, it's okay to step back and say, you know, this one's not for me or it, it, it takes up too much of my time. Um, what the hope is 
and again, I'll tell you kind of what admissions is looking for, you know, they love students who've been in maybe a clever organization for two years. Um, so they show some consistency, some commitment to something. But again, ninth and 10th grade is a great time to sort of experiment and find what it is that they want to do um, with their free time. Um, and the other thing is too, when I talk about interests and activities, I don't just mean within the four walls of high school and sort of the traditional clubs and organizations. I think of everything that's going on during their high school years. So a lot of your students may be really active in a, uh, their place of worship, whether that's a youth group, whether that's helping with services, um, whether that's a youth service that they're, that they're putting on themselves and they're coordinating that. Uh, it could be scouting. Um, it could be a lot of other activities. That's perfectly fine. It does not have to be within the school. Um, a lot of them may have jobs and that also shows leadership and shows commitment to something if students are working. So those do count and admissions folks do look at those. So, so don't think like, oh, they have to do things that are at the high school level. I don't wanna put that out there at all. Um, and the other thing we talked about is bandwidth and that goes with everything as they're reflecting are they putting, I don't want to say too much time because what too much time to one person is not enough for another person, right? So that's sort of you as a parent, as a family sitting down together and saying, you know, I noticed you're putting a lot of time in this and maybe this other thing is suffering or you're putting a lot of time in this, but you don't seem very happy. Um, and it seems to be a struggle and some struggle is okay. We learn a lot when we struggle. But if it's just a constant negative that the student's experiencing, maybe kind of jump in there and, and see what that's about and see if it's a bandwidth issue. Maybe they're just trying to juggle too many things, trying to be like a leader in all things and a 4.0 student in all things. And they just need to step back and say, I can't do everything. Great lesson to learn early. Um, but here are the things I can do and I can do well. All right, so uh, I don't know if any of you are familiar with Stephen Covey uh, and his, his uh, I don't even know what it is anymore, the seven, highly, seven habits of highly effective people. Um, but he always talks about uh, begin with the, with the end in mind. And so the idea is if college is a destination and your student is a ninth or 10th grader or an 11th grader, then what comes next for them? And that's, that's what the reflection is getting at. Right? If college is your de destination, how can you prepare for that now? Um, and Gina and I will both say what we do, we do help students through the admissions process. We love doing that. We know a lot about it. And so we can make it you know, relatively painless. I would say even fun and interesting, but it's not just about getting into the college or getting into several colleges. It's being successful once you get there. And so that's what we're really trying to build up in the students and the families that we work with, those tips to go through the admissions process success, successfully, but also get to the point where you are just, you know, ready to succeed once your student gets to college. So we call it purposeful planning because we like alliteration. So purposeful planning. And you can see here, this is a big slide. There's lots of information in the slide. But these are all the things that I talked about in, when I talked about reflecting. So you've looked to see what's happened in the past and now you're sort of planning to see based on that reflection, how can you move forward to get to that goal, which is not just getting into college, but a college degree and a fabulous career. So looking at the coursework, right? What's the student's skill set? You know, what kind of success do they have? Um, if they're like me, they love writing and, and history and all that, but math maybe like is pulling teeth, right? So, so they made their most challenging class may be the pre-calculus class, or it may be regular calculus, but not AP calculus. But maybe they go all the way to AP and IB in their English and literature because they just eat that up. They just love that. So that's something to think about. Like what is, their, what is their potential and what are their interests and goals and how can you help them get to those goals? Um, the activities in the school, <laughs> you know, it's, I laugh because there, I, there are some students who I've seen their applications 
And you can tell that they believe it's quantity and not quality. And that is, that is not the truth. I mean, I sometimes feel like if, if their application were on a scroll, they would just like, like the cartoon, they would just drop the scroll and it would just keep like rolling to the next town with everything, you know, in eighth grade, I rake leaves for my neighbor. It's like, okay, no, no. It's like, what quality activities do you want to be involved in? And where possible, what kind of commitment do you show? And do you have leadership in that activity? You know, those are the really cool things. You know, maybe your student founded a club or maybe they're part of a club that's just starting up because they see a need in the community, they see a need in the high school. That's fantastic because that really shows us they have a passion for something and they're interested in. Again, quality and outside activities too. It could be family related, right? Um, you know, I happen to work with a lot of students who have great family responsibilities. And that's either taking care of uh, elders that live in the home with them or siblings because you know both parents work a lot. And so then they're responsible for sort of getting the kids up and out to work, up and out to school or bringing, you know, or getting them home and making them dinner and helping them with their homework. Family responsibility is a significant outside activity. And so thinking about those things and are those things, you know, that, that they enjoy doing and what kind of skills do they get from that? I think is super important. And of course, volunteer community service. I mean, who, what school doesn't like a student who thinks about something other than themselves, right? Something beyond themselves. Uh, and so that's why community service is so important. And then building those relationships because the relationships they're building now by talking and seeking help with the teachers that they have or the school counselor, um, a, that builds fantastic skills for help-seeking behavior, which we love to see when they get to college, because then if they get in trouble, they're going to find somebody to help them. But also, they're going to need those letters of recommendation, and they're building relationships so those people will know them. So those are, those are, that's some really great planning that students can start with no matter what year they are in high school. Uh, one of the things that you can really help with um, and that you probably need to do yourself when you meet with the counselor is do a little preparation ahead of time. So the first is, you know, as we talked about, you've done the reflection and now you have some idea of the roadmap, right? You're like, okay, we know about the courses that are coming up. We've talked about your interests and what you want to do. So what does that look like in your roadmap? And so when you go to meet with the counselor, you have a vision of what that looks like. And so you can ask questions of the counselor accordingly. You know, what are some required courses that my students should take now if they wanna to go to college? You know, do they need four years of a language, three years of a language, two years? They love a language, what should they do with that? Um, what should they do if they wanna take these like highest level AP courses when they get um, outside of their, uh, their, their program, like what is it that they wanna do? And when you, have those com when you have those conversations with the counselors, they are really going to be excited to see that you're coming in with questions. It makes their job a lot easier, and Gina will tell you this, it makes their job a lot easier in helping to plan with that student. And it gets them really excited about, here's a student who has thought about what it is they wanna do and where they wanna go. After this then, so you've had the counselor meeting, you know what's ahead, you know what the school offers with the AP or the IB or the other classes. So the next thing is just thinking about, I like the idea of wellness and balance, I think for the student. Um, you want them to be involved and you want them to do well in their classes, right? Because both of those things are what schools are looking for. You know, when they get to the point um, where they're considering admissions and we're looking at all of those things. So getting involved is very important, again, because that shows what that student is gonna bring when they get to college, right? We want students who are really good academically, right? Because we want them to thrive, but we also want students who are gonna be fantastic in the life of the community that is any campus that they choose to go to. Um, and so that involvement is super important. And so anything you can do, again, to encourage your students to get involved, wherever their passion and their interests lie, 
is going to be very helpful. And again, the counselor and the counselor meeting can help you think about some of those things too. Where are areas where, where the student might wanna get involved? What's going on in the school? Um, wellness is another big thing. I mean, we, we know in high schools, we know in college that mental health uh, is just a really big issue right now um, for young people. And so are they aware of mental health? Uh, it's not activities, what's the word I'm looking for? Resources. Are they aware of mental health resources? Do they use them if they need them? Do they have a good support system and do they know how to build a support system? Um, and all of this, again, is laying the foundation for success in college, not just getting into college, but success in college. And then thinking about what roadblocks. I think this is part of planning too, is being really upfront uh, and talking to the students about like, what do you see is going to be some challenges? What are some challenges that you're going to face as you go through high school? And asking them and seeing what they're thinking of. Maybe for, for some students, it may be like, I don't know about making friends or making more friends or, uh, or is it like, I really wanna get involved in this activity, but I just, I don't know how to start. Or I need to ask this teacher a question um, and like, I, you know, would you help me figure out what I want to ask and how I ask it? I role play with students sometimes along that in college and they're like, I have to talk to a faculty member and like, they're not really people. They're these big authority figures who know like everything there is to know about the subject. And I have this question that I don't understand. And so we talk through that about what does that look like about going into a faculty professor, uh, faculty member's office and talking with them. Um, and then they come back and they're like, oh my gosh, like that was fantastic. And they were so nice and they were really helpful. And they gave me a hint on what's coming up on the next test. Uh, and so I just always smile when they come back because they, they're just, they're nervous about reaching out and asking those questions to authority figures. Sometimes you may have students that are just like, I'll just go right up to a teacher and say, I need this and I need this now. Help. And that's great. <laughs> that's great. So brainstorm some of those possible roadblocks. And again, it always comes back to the passion and the interest um, and you know, seeking help. I, I can't say more strongly about how being able to ask for help and being able to use resources while they're young and while they're in high school, how much that will set them up for success when they get to college. Because once because college gets bigger, and it might be a little harder to find. And if you sort of start those conversations about how important that is, it will be less of a stigma. And they'll be like, no, why should I know how to navigate college? I just got here. So I think that's just one of the, one of the best, most wonderful things you can do with your student. All right, so you know, we, we decided to call it a roadmap um, because we like the idea of a map and there's stops and there's places to visit on the way, um, but also because it's the idea of driving and helping to put the, the student in the driver's seat. You know, so often, um, <clears throat> it, sometimes it's uh, people expect, you know, like Gina and I, when they're working with a student that we drive everything. Or, you know, parents may say like, no, I'm driving everything. But we really believe that if the student is the driver, um, the results are better, the success is better for the student once they get into college um, because they've really done some of that work themselves and they really feel that sense of agency. Um, so when you're sitting down and creating that roadmap, however you want to do it with your student, like if your student is a visual person, I'm all about the drawing, right? Like do a literal roadmap, like here are the stops along the way or here's a timeline. Um, you know, if you're that's, super organized and they want like, like a roadmap that's like a bullet pointed list of things to think about, then, you know, go, go for that. But creating a roadmap that's clear, but also adaptable. Um, so they can, you know, maybe they want to go off on the side road and take a peek down there to see if like, oh, am I interested in this? This sounds really, this sounds like something I want to, I want to check out. So again, love the idea of a roadmap. Um, I can say roadmap because I'm talking to parents. I think if I had to talk to students, I would have to say like, you know, GPS or Waze because they'd be like a map. Like what is, what do you mean a roadmap? Just saying. <laughs> so 
here's some ideas, you know, and again, I talked about some of these things already, but some ideas to think about when you, when you sit down with a student, like what do they find most interesting? What do they hear are the required classes that they need to take? And what's really interesting, biased, I think it's really interesting, but uh, is that what may be required to graduate high school may not be the same to get into a selective college. So maybe in high school, they need two years of a language and three years of, of a science, but that selective college, and by selective college, I just mean it's not open admission, right? Some people get in and some people don't. Um, they may have to take four years of science or four years of a math, especially if they're looking into something like engineering or you know, biochemistry or any of the sciences or computer science, you know, more math, more science. So what are, what are things they should really think about if their interests are going a certain way in terms of taking that? What's required of the school they wanna to go to? What's required to graduate high school? Um, challenging classes. You know, I, I talked about this already. What one, one person's challenge uh, is another person's uh, <laughs> really big struggle, right? So, you know, chemistry, I love chemistry, but biology, no, I was not taking any sort of AP biology class because I that would have been too much of a challenge with all of the other things I wanted to do, right, in high school. So, you know, playing sports, being involved in activities, being involved in a church group, all of those things have to be taken in to account when you're thinking about the classes. Um, and then as you're thinking about these, like use some online resources, um, shameless plug, you know, go to Keys to College, look at some of our other webinars, uh, ask us questions. Um, we are happy to help out and help uh, send you to certain places uh, to look at ideas for what it is you might want to do and, and conversation starters you might want to have with your student. Um, we're going to talk about more about internships and summer programs uh, in our next workshop at the end of February, February 26th. But now is the time to start thinking about what your student might do in the summer. Um, but there's, there's, there's so many things out there, regardless of what grade they're in now, but uh, especially if they're juniors going into senior year um, or even sophomores to junior, there's so many summer programs out there and some are academic, some are leadership based, uh, some are nature based, but all of them really can give a student um, some, a real sense of self, uh, sense of skills, ability to feel like they can overcome any obstacles. Uh, and so I just, I recommend looking at those and we'll talk about where to find those, uh, how to sort of vet them and different opportunities that you should think about in, in the next webinar that we're gonna do February 26th. I said before, new activities, you know, ninth and 10th graders, it's perfect time for them to sort of experiment a little with the, with the programs that they might wanna get into and kind of dip their toe in the water and see if that's for them. And then maybe by the time they get later in their 10th grade year and definitely in their 11th to sort of commit to say like, I really like this, I wanna stick with this for a while. Um, because again, that commitment is, gets them into leadership position and then you know, it gets them just fantastic skills that colleges love to see. Um, and again, the, the identifying a need and fill it, like I cannot tell you how many people, uh, students I've seen who founded clubs based on a need that they see in their community uh, or in their high school about, I mean, kind of you name it, whether it's sports and activities, uh, whether it's tutoring for young people, whether it's working together to, to study for SATs or ACTs uh, or recycling programs. Um, they identify a need and they're like, we're gonna fill that need. And that's, that's the students that do that, you see that it brings them joy when they speak about it. Um, and you see that it also just shows again that they think about something beyond themselves. So here are a few resources. We talked about online resources briefly. Um, Keys to College, again, shameless plug. I, we think that's a great resource. Gina and I are really happy to answer questions whether through our email or if you sign up for the newsletter, you know, you can respond to what we write there. Um, Naviance is a program that um, many high schools have, not all high schools, but many of them. And students can use that as a tool to look at, 
you know, what are colleges looking for? How successful are students from my high school getting into this college? Uh, how can I start to do some planning about what courses I should take for these institutions? So Naviance is a fantastic tool. Um, the College Board, it's a website, College Board. Um, they are the ones who run the SAT program. The SAT comes from them, but there's so much more than that. They have lots of resources, not the least of which are study tips and study guides uh, on the SAT, but also just a lot about colleges. You can look up different colleges, you can search based on different majors, different activities. Um, the College Board is a great website. Uh, of course, your high school will have some good resources. Um, and again, that differs based on high schools, but talk to the school counselor, talk to the teachers um, and have your student do that. Uh, it's always best if you can help your student have these conversations again, because if they have these conversations and they learn to have them now in high school, they will be so much more ready when they get to college. Um, their friends, their peers, there's gonna be a lot of information going back and forth out there too. Some information not as helpful as other information. Um, so just, you may wanna sort of like listen with one ear a little bit and sort of vet that and say like, mm, not sure that's true. Um, and maybe like yeah, do some myth busting uh, with your student uh, based on what their friends say. And of course, college staff, like when, when I go on the road and I'm doing speaking, um, I am happy to answer any questions that students have either about Northeastern, about the scholarship programs we have, um, and uh, keys to college is the same way. Um, college staff are there to help. So ask those questions if there's an admissions counselor coming to the school, to the high school, reach out to the admissions office to say, hey, you know, we're just starting this. We're just, you know, ninth grade, 10th graders, but, you know, I know, I know my, my kiddo is really interested in, in your school. Like, can you send us a little information? Um, Gina had this great idea too that she also shared one time. And so I'm giving her full credit for passing this on. And that, that is if you're traveling and you need to stop at a place to eat, rather than sort of going to the uh, McDonald's, see if there's a college nearby, go onto that college campus, like see if you can go into the dining halls. Most of them are open. Maybe some of the private schools aren't, but like you can always ask, but then your student gets to see a college. They get to see a campus. You can sit and have a nice meal because I have to tell you, it's not the cafeterias of old. Um, they are basically like food courts now. Some of the places are just, they're unbelievable what kind of the food courts they have. But think about that. Like as you're traveling, stop in and visit a college or two and, and have a meal there. I just thought that was such a great way to, to stop and see, and see colleges that just aren't extra add-ons or a specific trip, but that are just on the way to end up doing a road trip that you're doing anyway. So I know I've tossed a ton of information there and I'm happy to take any questions. I know this has been a, a kind of quiet group at the moment, but if you have any questions, I'm happy to, to answer them. You can always sign up for the newsletter at keystocollege.org and we will send you uh, every other week, some just great tips and tricks that we have for 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders. Uh, and, and we always welcome your questions. Uh, you can also, it's not on here, but uh, K2C, that's the letter K, the number two, the letter C, K2C at keystocollege.org. Uh, and we will gladly answer any questions you have. My question, and you may have already talked about this. So I have a ninth grader. Um, and it always feels, or at least I, I remember it feeling like it's not time to do anything yet when you have a ninth grader, but I'm sure there are things. I loved the tip that you just gave about like going on to campuses and walking around and exploring and having lunch. Do you have any other tips for, um, ninth graders? Yeah. I mean, I, I think ninth graders, it's the time to sort of ease into the conversation about college uh, and not be like, you're going to college and here's what you're gonna look for, you know. Uh, I, I, I thought Gina's idea was great about visiting colleges because it just, it, it starts to set that mindset of like, picture yourself here. You know, yeah. you know what I mean? Like start to see this here. And then I think, I mean, ninth graders, they're, they're everything is just starting, right? It's it's 
they're figuring out like who they are and how do I fit here in this high school situation and like what classes do I like and what don't I like and so I think that like that reflection piece is really important like how did you do and what would you do differently um, mm. and it's not necessarily related directly to college but it's such a good skill if they think about uh, this went well and here's why I think it went well this didn't go well and so I'd want to change this and it can be academics it can be with their friends it can be mm -hmm. like in organizations that they want but I think that sometimes that gives them confidence and agency when they're like oh like I didn't do well but I can change something and I can you know make it better or I can like that club was not my thing I'm gonna go try this and and it's just like oh like that's okay yeah, I love I love what you said about like trying different things and trying out lots of things and deciding what you like best. Um, which at my son's high school, there are a lot of clubs, there are a lot of things and they even have like the club periods during the day. So wow. it's easy to kind of go around and try different things and maybe not commit fully. So I like also what you said about like, you could try different things and then maybe you decide that you'd like this the best. Yeah. Um, and I wanted, and I know that that's kind of important for those earlier, like ninth and 10th grade. But I also remember when my daughter was applying that like having those leadership positions in those clubs were super handy when mm -hmm. filling out applications too yeah and i i think you know there's a myth like oh like the more you do the better like you should be like well-rounded like you better have one sport and one music and one it's like yeah you know that's not true if a student really like loves to do something and they have three clubs that are that they're just doing this because it's their jam like that's great like they they should totally run with that Totally wrong. Right. But yeah, I mean, sure, leadership helps, but a lot of schools are also looking at leadership more broadly. Like, yes, they're looking for the mm. traditional, you know, president, all this, but they're also looking at, you know, this student had an internship or this student did a research opportunity uh, or this student has a job, you know, and they've been promoted. Yeah. Like, you know, that's also leadership. So I think a lot of colleges right. are looking at that more broadly too. Okay. 